what uh, does esteemed audience need to know about the new Trick and Treat uh, anthology, which is available now? Well, I, I think number one, that uh, just in the anthology theme this year is so much fun. Uh, trick or treat for mystery writers, what could be better? Um, and you have such a variety in uh, this anthology. Um, boy, it's just like, a, you know, grabbing candy from a candy jar. You know, you get to spend a little time on this one and then maybe, you know, skip around to another one. And um, uh, I think it's just going to be a real enjoyment for any mystery lover, anyone who enjoys Halloween. So I know the uh, last time we, we did this, uh, episode 79, esteemed audience, make sure you listen to that either directly after this or directly before. You've, you've got your day sorted. Um, we we talked about the theme of 2020 um, and it was a little bit about vision, I believe. We talked about the uh, 20th chapter within the, the Bible at one point. A lot of different variations on 2020. What was the overall theme for submissions for Trick or Treat? There's always some type of mystery to it. Uh, there's some type of a uh, little bit of a thrill uh, since it is Halloween uh, that is included in the stories that I've read so far. Well, if, if I could, I'll jump to the, the back of the book um, and to answer your question. Crumbling mansions and ancient cemeteries, haunted houses and med school dissection rooms, all are terrible places to visit on the spookiest night of the year. So of course, the authors of the Speed City Sisters in Crime go there and you can go with them from Halloween parties to autumn festivals to trick-or-treaters. Indiana is the home of ghosts, apparitions and in the flesh evil ones in this time and in yesteryear. 16 tales for All Hallows' Eve when the veil between the afterlife and this life thins and the night fills with wonder and dread. Yay. Well said. <laughs> when, uh, well, if I can just interject here, when, uh, when Diane and I you know, started, started looking at, at doing this anthology, um, our, our thought process was that it had to relate to Halloween or, or some activity that, that was wrapped around that particular holiday. And we wanted stories that were between 3,000 and 6,000 words. And really, that was what we said. And we were delighted with the way people interpreted that and came up with really interesting, fascinating things. Um, Diana, do you want to add anything to that? So I love the variety of the submissions that we got. Um, people are great about coming up with their own take on what Halloween means and what um, their favorite parts of Halloween are, obviously enough so that they could write a story about it. But we have some from the past um, and some kind of futuristic or uh, sci-fi sort of like um, and everything in between. It was, it was really fun. So with all the submissions that you got, uh, Tony and Diana, our, 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 our fearless editors, how do you go about the impossible task of winnowing that down to the number of, of, of the anthology? Do you throw them all up in the air and whichever one's laid <laughs> on the table, they're in and whichever ones are on the floor, don't, sorry, submit next year? Well, it was a blind submission. I, also, I want to emphasize that too. Um, the only person who knew what stories were connected to the authors was Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth was the person that stripped out the name and everything and, and sent the rest of it on to Diana and I. And we both read the stories and then we, we sort of ranked them before we talked about them together. And, um, and then it was just a matter of we, we knew from the size of the book that we probably could take 16, 17, maybe 18 stories if, you know, if we could get a word count that, that, you know, worked in there, you know, like if some people had a 3,500 one, you know, that would allow extra room. So we might be able to fit in a 17th story or whatever. And we just sort of um, empirically played with it. We were, um, yeah, we were delighted that, that we felt like so many of the stories uh, were just needed little tweaks. 
And then we had some that we we definitely needed, felt we needed some edits to to you know make the story cohesive and and uh, all the authors were great to work with. Um, we really, uh, I'm trying to think where there were really only two or three stories that didn't work out and mainly the authors themselves pulled the plug on them. Did yeah, that's, I was going to add to that. Um, we, some of them we gave the, I don't think they agreed with the suggestions maybe that we came up with mm -hmm. or they didn't have time to make those um, corrections in the time frame we wanted. So um, they pulled the story, but there weren't very many. Most everybody was willing to at least entertain what, what our ideas were. And so does it work that, uh, you know, you divide them up evenly and Tony, you take one stack and, and Diana, you take the other and then you edit them and come back together? Or are you each editing every story and, and doing a, a separate pass? I think each of us took a set of stories to do the first pass but both of us edited all the stories. And, yeah, after and, we had our first look at them and our and going through about half of them, then um, we shared our our edits with each other, and then we got on the phone and, and went through them and and discussed what we had suggested as an edit and and if the other person agreed with that or had a different idea and. Um, that worked real well. Tony and I were in agreement almost always with things. Uh, and so then we had a good bunch of writers to work with, too. We, that we was did. Great. We did. Mm -hmm. We had a great bunch of writers to work with. So, Karen, as a submitter to the anthology, I assume you got edits from Diana and Tony. Were they absolute tyrants, or <laughs> what, was, <laughs> what was your experience of being edited? Oh, it was a great experience. They had good suggestions. And if uh, Ross or Russ, sorry, Ross Carley and I uh, had a question or thought maybe what they suggested might not work, we would have a discussion. So, but I think 90% of what they suggested we incorporated. 